Hey y'all, Irix Sky here. Welcome back to another Lightroom CC tutorial. And uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't, youtube.com forward slash Irix Sky. And check out my Lightroom, Lightroom CC tutorials playlist for a lot more. But what I'm going to demonstrate within this tutorial is how to change a uh, potentially good photo. Now this photo I took of a waterfall. I used a... Uh, a Zeiss Battis 25 millimeter, and although that lens is very good in my opinion, the saturation and just the overall image quality is excellent. I want to show you what you can do within Lightroom CC to make it look even better. Now, keep in mind that I shoot JPEG plus RAW, so this was the RAW file uh, that I imported into uh, into Lightroom CC. So if you're going to use Lightroom CC, I highly recommend if your camera supports JPEG plus RAW to definitely shoot in RAW, and here's why. Uh, you can find all the cameras that I use and lenses. Just go to irixsky.com and go to store and go to cameras, and you can find the cameras. This was the A7R2 with the baddest 25, but find all of my equipment there. So the first thing you're going to notice, if you click these little bars up here, you're going to have a series of options. And what I'm going to do is show you the most basic stuff. You don't have to be an expert to uh, to use this tool and uh, you know really make your images look better. And something else that's kind of cool. Let me see if it does it here. Okay, well at one point I would get like a hover over and it would show some. Uh, it would list some high level information. So the first thing I want to do is go down to the very bottom and there's an option called optics now Lightroom CC in my opinion is worth the investment just for this feature so what I'm going to do is, is select now watch this image closely here the waterfall and see what happens I'm going to do remove chromatic aberration and then enable lens corrections so you can see there especially that second option watch when I unclick it see how it kinda gets the image looks dull but then I do enable lens corrections and you can see the image already looks a lot more awesome and that's just based upon adding this this profile for the lens you know as I mentioned I was using the Zeiss Battis 25 millimeter and this program recognizes that lens like it does my other lenses too which is really neat so that in itself and let's just back that off again so you can see see when that's taken off and look at how flat the image gets too. So see this first option and then the second option. You can see it kind of flattens out, it gets brighter, looks better. And I mean that looks good. I mean it looked good out of the camera but let's take it to the next level. Now there's a ton of options here depending upon how you want to make something look. But my thing has always been uh, has always been simplicity. So look at the trees see the leaves and you can see the moss on the rocks and that sort of stuff right here under color I'm gonna to go to saturation now watch this if I drag it way over there see now things look kinda of fake the greens are too green it, it just it looks it looks doctored up so if I do undo and go back to like it was you can see the the huge uh, difference there see if I go all the way to the right that's like ridiculously green and looks kind of fake but if I do edit undo and go back to there that's almost not colorful enough so if you want to make those colors especially if you're doing uh, if you're doing the wil you know wilderness and that sort of thing and you want to make it look a little bit more visually pleasing what I do is just drag saturation slowly now see right there that's only plus 15 and again it this will vary depending upon what you snapped a photo of and and lighting and everything else but you can see when I did a plus 15 and I'm just gonna back it up here look at these look at these tree branches here see the green and you can see the green there and you can see green moss now I'm gonna take this off keep your eyes on that same area so I'm gonna undo now you can see what I undo it still looks good but it's not as noticeable so now let's go back to let's take it up even a little bit more let's take it to plus see that's plus 61 see now there's a huge difference or plus 62 but if we go all the way to the right that's a little bit insane 
So you just got to find this is, see, when you got plus 6, when I go from plus 6 to about plus 20, I can tell a big difference. And now I'm at plus 21. For my personal preference, I like plus 21. There's no right or wrong answer for which for how far one should adjust these sliders. But when you do after you do adjust, what I recommend doing before making other adjustments is looking at the overall image because obviously when I was doing this, I was looking at the piece of the image where better color was better color saturation. Hey, Sean Cooner, stop. Stop. He's scratching my sofa. That's Sean Coonery, the enormous Maine Coon cat. You can check out his videos on my channel. Um, but yeah, so I was focusing my eye upon this area. But what I also want to look at, see this log right here that fell into the, uh, into the waterfall? I don't want to adjust saturation where it adversely impacts the, uh, the look of other parts of the image. So looking at all aspects of this image, I'm happy with what I've got. So that plus 21 for this case... The plus 21 saturation is what I want. So with that being the case, the next thing I'm going to do, and again, I like to keep it simple, but this vibrant slider, see right above saturation? It's at zero now, but check this out. When I go way over there, that looks kind of crazy. So I'm going to do undo to take it back where it was. But let's just do it just a little bit. So in my opinion, for this particular image right there, plus 40, it just makes things, you know, like it says, it makes things more vibrant. So now if you look at this image really closely, you can see detail in the rock. You can see the separation of colors in the, you know, the various greens and the trees. So it, it's, it looks good. Now what else might I do? I might go up here to where it says exposure. And now it's on zero now, but check this out. If I go to the left... It's too dark, way too dark. But if I go to the right, so you can get it too bright to where it looks way overexposed. So to be frank, let's just go just a little bit to the right. See that, even just a little bit. That lens correction that I did initially, the optic setting in the bottom, that got it pretty much spot on. Because you notice when I did that, it brightened it up a little bit. Watch this right here. If I'm on zero, I'm just going to brighten it up to dot. I don't even know if I want to go that far. I think about right there, dot two seven. Again, personal preference. But see, then, so those three set, or those set, not three settings, but the must do for, each, for every image, in my opinion, is optics. Do the remove chromatic aberration and enable lens corrections. The other must do is saturation. And the other must do is vibrance. The exposure, only necessary if it's underexposed or overexposed. If you're not familiar what exposure is, if you take a photo and it looks too bright or too dark, that's exposure. So if you want to get fancy with it, there's some other things you could do here. Like see the blacks? If I drag that, let me undo that so you can see. So look at these rocks over here in the bottom left. So if I do blacks, I can make those look darker. But do I really want to do that? Uh, maybe just a little bit. Because see, by making that look darker, now the water stands out more. Okay, so just to recap. See, that's on negative 24. Let's undo it. Look at the rocks in the bottom left. See, they're kind of bright right now. Well, let's take this back down. See, now that looks that looks more visually pleasing, in my opinion. Again, a lot of this is personal preference. What I think looks good and what you think look, what you think looks good is probably completely different. So, you know, don't. Uh, th there's no there's no true right or wrong. It's personal preference. So, you know, ask yourself what you want. Play around with these sliders until you do it. And again, this is just an example with a with a landscape image. Check out my YouTube channel and subscribe if you haven't already. YouTube.com forward slash Irix guy. Because I'll be posting a plethora 
of Lightroom tutorials. And I don't consider myself to be an expert. It's just a program I installed because I had a good camera and some good lenses. And I wanted to see if I could make those, uh, those images even better. And this tool, sure, at first it was a little bit daunting. But that's why I'm putting together these tutorials because... If you go in here, there's a lot more you can do than this. This is just one quick, simplistic example. But just to show you how simple it can be if you're not trying to get too fancy with it. So to recap, we did optics, we did remove chromatic aberrations, and we did enable lens corrections. And that identified my lens, which was the Zeiss Baddest F2 25mm. And then I went in and did... Uh, saturation to make those colors look more saturated and then I did vibrance to make everything like it says more vibrant I slightly adjusted exposure to brighten it up a little bit and then I went into blacks and turned that down to negative 30 to make these rocks kinda look cool so I hope this tutorial was a value again I'm not a pro but I like doing this so if there's something you would like to see me address Within, within an upcoming Lightroom CC tutorial video here on my channel, shoot me a message. The best way to get a hold of me is my Facebook fan page. That's facebook.com forward slash irixguy. Or go to my website, irixguy.com, and you can follow me on all my social media. So thanks for watching, and y'all have a good day. Hey, y'all, irixguy here. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. It's viewers like you that enable my channel to continue to grow. Thank you.